YouTube is Brian Proctor back again, and this will be the part two to making your own children's book. And uh, right off the bat, let me apologize for my voice because I am kind of down with a cold. I'm coming out of it, but it's still with me. So, um, I've been getting a lot of good um, comments about my videos, and a lot of people will say, you know, you deserve more more views. How come you don't have more views? And I, I at this to this point, I still don't know, but I think maybe it has something to do with my the length of my videos. And uh, when I teach, I try to put as much as I can into it. And my videos will usually go for 40, 50, an hour, you know, long. And I think a lot of people just don't want to sit there and watch. Even if the, the con you know, the content is great and they need it, people just don't want to sit there and watch an hour worth of something. Like I say, even if they need it, it's more of a microwave world. Everybody wants their, their meal in one minute. So I think what I'm going to start doing is just shortening my videos so that, um, People will watch it more. Not that I'm trying to get money from YouTube because I gave that up a long time ago. I just decided to teach, just to, to try to teach the best lesson I can. In any way, so that I won't continue to lengthen this uh, video, I'll stop talking and start drawing. So this will be more on um, design, character design, but not so much on character design, but more on drawing, how to draw. My pencil broke and it's going to break again. Um... So we're, we're, we're focused on drawing, maybe get some uh, perspective in and do a little bit of layouts. So I'll talk to you about layout, page layouts. So first of all, let's draw. People say they can't draw. And this is geared for people that want to do children's books. They have it in their head. They want to do a children's book, but they don't know how. They don't know how to draw. They don't know who to go to. So this is the easiest way that I can possibly show you how to draw. We can all draw a square, circle, and triangle. And I will always say that in all my videos everybody can do that if you can do a b c d then you can make these shapes so the easiest way i can i can show you and as i said a lot of this is in my, all of my videos make a rectangle let's just say this is the size of the person that i want minus the head and then just come up like that and it's going to be your legs your head is here and your arms are here and this is a simple way to do a person now you can always lengthen it depending on if you're going to do a man or a grown-up shall we say now this I'm going to stick with doing children so I'm going to draw the bodies more geared toward children so doing that you want to put your triangle here and that's your underwear and if you have a child, you, you know what the shape of underwear are because you've changed them so many times. And that, that'll come in later, why you want to put it there. But basically, you want to know where the child's waist is, so that, that helps. And then you want to put your half triangle, or if that's hard, just an oval. Usually, I'll use a, a half triangle because the foot is usually more pointed that way. And then for hands. And then it's good if you draw a center line down because once you start turning the figure, you'll need to know where that center line is. Now, this is short, so this will represent uh, a child. Now, the one thing about this, you don't have to worry about the shapes too much because you're going to cover it with clothes. So let's put a neck on them, first of all. And then let's add some clothes to them. So with a t-shirt, you're just going to do a U like that. And then we want to round the shoulders off because the shoulders are not pointed. Just round them off like that. T-shirt, just bigger sleeves because children always have big shirts on. Big shirts, big pants. And then the body, you can actually bring it in, slim it in a little bit. Just curve it in and out around the hips and the waist and the hips. But as I said, we're going to cover that up. A lot of it is going to get covered up by its clothes. But you still want to have just a little bit of shape and then the pants like so or you can have short pants depending on you know how your child is dressed but you want to make them big you don't want to make them skin tight like superhero clothes so we'll have a long one and a short one and then if the leg usually comes to the point from the way i show you just bring it out a little bit more and then i usually put socks on my characters especially if he has shorts on a little U and a round shoe and then maybe a heel and let me ink that real quick I, I don't want to get into as I say long drawings but let me ink this just so that you can see where, where I went with 
Round the shoulders off. T-shirt, I'm gonna come down low. Pants. You, know, you don't want to crotch it because you usually have your little wrinkles, your shorts. And you can put like a pocket on the side of the shorts. It could be cargo shorts, pocket, pocket. Uh, well, actually, the socks would come down instead of up, like so. And then the shoe. And the heel. And this one, I won't even put a shoe on it. I'll just do the triangle. Like that. And it's very simple to draw the body and then your head, your arms, and you just do ovals for hands right now. I'll get into that. I had uh, planned on showing you some hands, but actually that's the wrong side. But we'll get into that in the next video. As I said, I don't want to, to, to um, make this too long. And I want to make sure I'm focused on this paper. Let me bring it up a little bit more. Now again, draw the oval, oval, uh, rectangle, the size of the, the person. Let's say you want to put the middle line in. Let's put the middle line over to the side a little bit. Now it's going to be a three quarters shot. So which means he's going to be turned a little bit. So the legs will come up and it's going to stop on this line. But that's, this leg's going to be fatter, but that's okay. We'll fix that like so. And then you put your head. Over that, you put your neck there. Now, when you turn a person, you'll see more of a side. So what you want to do is just draw a straight line down this way. And it's the same thing. If you draw the box like so, and then you just put a line down the side, then it looks like you're turning your box. That's a simple and easy way to do it. You might have to adjust the head a little bit, but that comes with time. So. You're going to put your arm here and you turn it to the side and bring it down to a point more arm here and i said you can always adjust because you the more practice you have the better you become and then as i said you can always lengthen the uh legs to fit the character it's all adjustable and now you say okay but he's so fat on this side but well, that's when you bring it in a little bit like that just curve it in because you know your waist is supposed to be smaller just curve it in and that, what i like to do for kids i curve it into curve this in and around like so and then curve that in remember shoulders are small so let's move this head over like that because I usually I'll do a V to represent where the head goes, where the neck goes. So this part is going to be closer to that, and this is going to be further away. So the head will go like that, and then you have your three-quarter shot. Now the kid could be looking, or your character could be looking this way, could be looking that way, depending on how you draw it. So, and again, once again, as I say, it doesn't have to be perfect because you can put. You will put clothes on your, your character on the shoulders. And once you get into doing more wrinkles <clears throat> in your clothes, it'll be a little easier for you. I actually have a, a video on doing clothes and it was part one, which I have to finish eventually because that video has been out for a while. And then your hands. and your feet and it's, it's very simple very easy now let's get more into the head of a, uh, your character now doing the head everybody knows you start with an oval but actually if you can um, do more of an egg shape wider or, or yeah wider at the top and more narrow, narrower, that's the word that, that gets me all the time, like synthesizer, that's a hard one for me to just throw out. Narrow, narrower at the bottom. But if not, don't worry about it, just do an oval. Now, let's do this and the shoulders. Okay, let's do another one here. And this and the shoulders. 
and it's hard, doing the shoulders are just because some people might get lost they're like I don't know what he just did so let's just say you do this this is your body again your shoulder your your straight line your V that represents where your neck goes and your head now your shoulders are just just imagine drawing a triangle like that from there now let's take this cat right here let's do center center and this is how you draw a face center line center that you make the X center that and go uh, or should I say half half of this whole thing from here to here you want to go half that's where your eyes are gonna go from here to here half of this is where your nose is supposed to go and from here to here half of that is where your mouth is supposed to go so that's supposed to be your proportions or perfect proportions for face now <clears throat> if we do this and your ears go above that line from the nose to the eye now let's just say that's your full grown man but you're doing a children's book so let's take this guy here now what you want to do is you have the same size head shall we say but instead of doing the eyes in the center you want to bring it down because children they have to grow into their head so just bring it down here's your center line this should bring it down where almost where the nose is going to be and then just draw your eyes and it's an easy way to draw eyes let's spray some apart because he's looking a little alien your eyes a little nose and your mouth like that and he looks more like a kid and then kids always have these big ears because you have this much a lot you have more forehead than you do in the man and then another thing you want to do is let's get his chin here you want to give him a smaller neck like that and then small shoulders and that's how you would end up drawing a child and then whatever kind of hair you want on the kid. And you can have any kind of eyes you want. And remember the ears. A lot of kids have ears that actually stick out. Small neck, small shoulders. You don't want the shoulders to really go past the head. Because with a, with a, with a um, an adult, your shoulders will go past the head and give him that that more rugged, um, not so much bodybuilder, but athletic look, and he'll have a bigger neck. But for a child, you want to keep it that way. And the same way with a woman, if you're going to do the woman, let's just say that's the father, that's the child, and here's the mother. Give her a point, the pointy chin, and then come up. So you're doing the same thing. And with her, the same thing. Your eyes are going to be in the center. The nose. And then the mouth. Now, already it looks more feminine than this because the chin is pointed. And that's kind of crooked. Let's see if I can change that. You don't, want it, you don't want a triangle point, but you want it more pointier. And then with the woman, I will give it the, just, if you can't draw lips, I'll give it just the bottom lip. Maybe color it a little bit, a smaller V nose, and then depending on if you want to do um, the eyelashes somehow, you can. You can keep the eye round, but there's many ways to do eyes. And then there's your mom for the, the um, child and her ears as well. And then whatever type of hair she's going to have. And let me ink that just because I'm inking. So round eyes, couple eyelashes. Don't go crazy like this. That that that's childish. Just maybe put one or two. Is it Charles' book? Uh, you don't have to leave the light source. I always talk about leaving a light source. It could just be black. Uh, small nose, bottom lip. Just go straight across, and then that. And a little way to do a shine is to whenever you color it, you just leave a little little piece of light. Just a little light source somewhere and then point that her ears could be covered it might not be covered depending on the hair and then of course a woman will not have a broad neck as well she'll have a more of a medium neck and with her whenever you do the woman like this guy has a triangle neck 
his kind of slopes down. You want to do the woman the same way. You want to kind of slope it like that, more of a curve to it. And you don't want you don't want her shoulders uh, too wide as well. Just a little little past the head. Now, see, even that neck might be a little big. And then let's just put a shirt on her just because it's YouTube. There you go. And then you have your woman, your, your, you have your heads, the way to draw heads. And I think to doing a baby, it's going to be even bigger, smaller. I think the eyes might be even bigger for babies and the mouth smaller. And give it a little chin, fat jaws. Now, if you are creating your own character, then the sky's the limit. Now, if you're drawing like from your, your grandchild or, or something like that, then you have a basically a starting point. Your, your grandchild or your daughter or your son, you have a little starting point. You don't want the baby to be so fat, but you kind of get the point. The wider the eyes, the bigger the head, the, the smaller, the, the closer you bring the chin up to the baby. And he's going to have the small, small, small ears as well. And don't forget the little baby eyebrows, just like everybody else has to have eyebrows. Babies usually have bigger eyes because it's, it's a cute thing. And as I said, a little small, small mouth. Uh big head, the little cheekbones on there, make the little cheeks kind of like puff up, and then the head, and then ears. And then not much hair for a baby. And the bigger your eyes, the more of, you, of a light source you want to have, and then just add baby stuff from freckles. And then he's going to have, a, babies usually have kind of a fatter necks, but they don't have much neck, like so, and then maybe even smaller shoulders, maybe even even smaller shoulders, and then you have your babies. So follow these steps, and you will be able to start drawing faces. Now, if you don't want to do so much of a cartoony face, a few things you can add to it. Let me just do this guy so that you can add a little bit more to it. To make it more realistic if you're not trying to draw serious cartoon faces which you should if this is your first time you should but a couple things you can do is like say add, add a bottom lip um this little piece there you can add more to the mouth uh shape the eyes more like a football like that you already have the circle so just you can do that. There's a little piece that comes over the eye where your eye folds. It's like that. It comes here and goes there. Now this is just to add more so that your character will be less of a cartoon and kind of get more into the realism. Add a piece of the nose here. A little cheekbone. But you stay away from the cheekbone because it kind of makes them look old. The other eyebrow. And then just more detail in the ear, the eye, with the light source, like that, and then give him more hair, and, that, and it becomes a little more realistic. You do a little, just a little more detail on parts of the person, and uh, whatever kind of hair. And it becomes a little more detailed instead of doing the cartoon. And there are more things. If I wanted to make this guy old, I'll start putting some wrinkles around there. The little crow's nest, the crow's feet, uh, maybe little wrinkles around the eye. Then I would start to do more of that little cheekbone. Make his face a little thinner. Make it more s s swollen, uh, like sinking in. And then he becomes old. Either old or sick, one of the two, depending on what you're shooting for. So that is it for the, the anatomy or the drawing part. Let's get into uh, just a little bit of uh, perspective and layout. If I can 
teach you guys perspective, show you guys perspective. Um, vanishing point. Let's just say your character is here and he's looking out. Let's say his eyes, he's turned around, so this is his nose. So his eyes will be right here. Your vanishing point is wherever you look out at. So as far as you can go, that would be your vanishing point, as far back as you can go. And I have to use the, the, the train track, the train track um, example. Let's say if you stood on train tracks and you went and you, and you look back, as far as it can go, at your vanishing point. So your lines, would, your tracks would be like that. So if you stood there and you look far, as far as back as you can see where all your lines converge, that's your train track. Now, this can also be your horizon line because this is your horizon line is where the land meets the sky. So if that was the ocean and this is the sky, that's your horizon line. Now, at not, uh, not necessarily um, the vanishing point. What, I'm, what am I trying to say? I'm getting, I'm getting stuck here. But let's move on to this next one. Because if the next guy here, let's just say he was kneeling down. Like so. I can draw a guy on his knees. And he was looking there. That would be his point of view right here because he's looking down but this guy's looking he's kneeling down so this guy's looking up and I'm also off focus okay let's get this thing back together because um, I'm running out of time I'm 21 minutes now if I'm not mistaken anyway this is your your eye line I call it your eye line and whatever wherever your eye line stops or lands anything below your eye line you're going to see the top of it anything above it you're going to see the bottom of it so if this guy was standing on the tracks and he would have to actually in perspective he would have to be standing here looking that way now anything above that he would see the train tracks coming above and this is something that you can't really teach in three or four minutes so that would have to have Um, what is the structure holding it up because you'd see the bottom of that so if I drew the trestles trestles is that what it's called it would be like this because you'd see the bottom of it and then your tracks so yeah wherever your eye is that's your perspective so I'm saying that to say let's say this is my scene in my book in my children's book now I have to gauge where the um, reader is going to see so if I say let's say the the eyeline here as the artist the eyeline is going to be here so it's going to be a room so I'll put the room let's say I put the door here in the room so anything above that you're going to see the top of it and uh, let's say I put the wall here there's a wall here there's a wall right here and this is my floor right here so if I did like a, the ceiling light let's just say and this is getting kind of hard for you guys I'm gonna see above it I'm below it which is natural because it's a ceiling light but anything here if I put a table because my eye line is right here so this is where I'm standing as a child uh, I'm small so if I do a table I'm gonna see the top of the table and that perspective is off and that's the way to draw a table just start drawing boxes and then you can do this and then erase the rest so I'm going to see the top of that table and the bottom of this light which is kind of screwy but it's a quick thing so if there was a cup I'd see the you know the top of the cup here now if it was something a little taller if it went past this line let's just say a lamp let's say I put a lamp here once it goes past that line I'm gonna start seeing the bottom of the shade 
This is why I don't start out with a pen right away. So if this had lines on it, it would go, it would be curved like that until it got here and then it would be straight. Then it would start curving up more. The higher it went, the more it would curve up. So anything above your eye level, you would see the top, you'd see the bottom of it, any object, anything below, you would see the bottom. So anytime you do a page, you would have to figure out where your eye line is going to be. Who's, who's viewing it? Is it going to be um, from the character's standpoint or from your standpoint as the artist? Things that you have to figure out. And as I say, I don't want to make this video long because I'm trying to keep my video short, but there's a lot to teach when you do end up teaching. So if there was a carpet, the carpet would go somewhere like that. So let me pause this and get my thoughts together. Okay, so this these are basically your page layout and something else you want to, to um, figure out is where do you want your words because on my in my last video I put my words you know on another book and I had the picture on you know on another book on another page and I had the picture on one page now you can put your words on that page you can you know have it anywhere you want to on that page or you can um, put it on the next page and I'm rushing again because I say I don't want to make this video long but when you start teaching stuff time flies so yeah that's something you have to think about when you draw do you want your words on this page somewhere or do you want it on another page um a lot of people when they draw they'll leave space oh, it's my alarm i don't know why it's going off they will leave space on the drawing if this is your paper, the picture will go, could be like this, and then they'll have just words for you, a uh, place for your words. Or they could have, you know, like I say, words up here, words wherever. It's your book, it's your design, but that's something you have to think about. And as far as uh, page count, too, how many pages do you want? Is it going to be a long story? Is it going to be a short story? You can lengthen your book by doing this page, uh, picture, words picture words picture words and that depends on how many words you have in there and just like long YouTube videos I guess kids don't want to be reading a lot so you know you want to keep it to a minimum if you're trying to you know produce it for the mass stream of people out there so I guess on that one I'm gonna cut this video cut it a little short so hopefully you got enough to get you started or okay or do to do some character designs and some layouts you know go through the story um, pick out you know where you want your words to start and where you want your words to end as as on a piece of paper um, once upon a time there was Troy Troy had a friend named Betty Betty knew Troy since high school when they graduated high school like that so that way number one you'll be able to see just how long your story is going to be how many pages you um need and if you want to you start doubling up on your words if the page if the book becomes too long or too big but as i said you don't want to have too many words because that kind of scares kids away and it depending depends on the age that you um gear it towards i mean you gear it towards uh um kids that can read already or uh, will the parents be reading the book? A lot of things you have to think about, but for now, work on your character design, work on your drawing basically, and then work on your character design, and then just go from there. Remember, the kid's head is big. So, on that note, I will let you guys go and I'll work on part, what is it, part three. All right, I am out. Later. <laughs>